The United States was formed primarily as a result of the original colonists' desire for independence from British rule. The Declaration of Independence was adopted on July 4, 1776, and it articulates these grievances which included things like judicial injustices, violation of natural rights, military repression, imposition of unilateral policies, lack of autonomy, and so on. One of the most common modern-day misconceptions is that the United States was founded as a Christian nation. While it's true that many of the founding figures were influenced by Christian values, the formation of the United States was significantly motivated by the desire to create a government free from theocratic rule and to ensure freedom of religion for all. Thus, the First Amendment was written to ensure that there would be no establishment of a national religion. The separation of church and state, influenced by thinkers like John Locke, was intended to avoid the conflicts and persecutions that had plagued Europe. Over the past few decades, the rise of white Christian nationalism in the United States has sought to blur the lines between church and state, pushing the country towards a theocratic model that its founders explicitly sought to avoid. The modern resurgence of Christian nationalism can be traced back to the 1980s with the rise of the religious right, spearheaded by figures like Jerry Falwell and Pat Robertson. The movement sought to mobilize evangelical Christians as a political force, emphasizing traditional values and opposing secularization. Over the years, the Republican Party increasingly aligned with white Christian nationalist agendas advocating for policies that reflect conservative Christian values on issues like abortion, LGBTQ rights, and education. White Christian nationalism is a threat to democracy and the American way of life because of its undermining of constitutional principles and eroding of individual rights. It has led to increased polarization and compromised the nation's commitment to diversity and all the principles that made America great in the first place. Furthermore, the advocates of this ideology believe that they are fighting a holy war against evil. I brought my Bible. The end justifies the means which allows for the justification of unspeakable violence in the name of what they believe to be the one true God. History repeats itself. This is proven time and time again. The rise of white Christian nationalism in the United States bears alarming similarities to the conditions that preceded the rise of other authoritarian regimes such as the Nazis in Germany or the Spanish Inquisition, not to mention what already happened in America during the puritanical governance in the early colonial days, which led to events like the Salem witch trials where hysteria resulted in the execution of innocent people. Actual witch hunts. But the entire thing has been a witch hunt and uh, there is no collusion. Send the military into these black neighborhoods, make the streets safe, they'll complain about it. It, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Well, not with the Jim Crow stuff. Who cares? And to drink out of a different water fountain. Big fucking deal. Russia. Who can we give a round of applause for Russia? With people sitting out blankets and selling cockroaches on sticks! The current climate in the United States echoes these historical precedents. Its promotion of the fusion of religious and political power. This will ultimately lead to the suppression of dissent, the erosion of personal liberties, and the targeting of marginalized groups. If left unchecked, we risk repeating the tragic mistakes of the past, demonstrating that history, when ignored, often repeats itself. We have to do something to increase our birth rate, or the vacuum that's created will be filled by people that don't believe in our values. We are at war against MAGA, Project 2025, white nationalism. Project 2025 is a comprehensive initiative organized by the Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank aimed at reshaping the United States federal government and 
consolidating executive power in the event of a Republican victory in the 2024 presidential election. The project is designed to prepare a conservative administration to take immediate and effective control on January 20th, 2025 by focusing on four main pillars, policy agenda, personnel recruitment, training, and a 180-day playbook. The document known as Mandate for Leadership spans nearly 900 pages and outlines extensive policy proposals. It is in effect the most un-American proposal ever created and if implemented would completely annihilate the democratic society we all enjoy today. It begins by reclassifying tens of thousands of federal and civil service workers as political appointees to replace them with loyalists, dismantling several federal agencies like the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Education. Also, it drastically reduces regulations on corporations regarding environmental related issues to favor fossil fuel production. This is particularly concerning considering we are on the brink of an irreversible climate disaster that could render the entire planet uninhabitable. The four pillars of Project 2025. As detailed in the Mandate for Leadership document, there are some main components aimed at implementing conservative principles and reshaping the federal government across various sectors. The first of these would be the reclassification of federal workers, which would allow a Republican administration to replace all civil servant workers with Trump loyalists with the intent of dismantling what the project views as liberal-leaning bureaucracy. The second piece is focused on dismantling federal agencies. For example, the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Education, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Federal Trade Commission, the Department of Energy, and any other agency that the Republican administration views as standing in its way to do, essentially, whatever it wants without democratic checks and balances. The implications of this are clearly concerning and would have widespread and dire consequences for democracy and the well-being of the entire country and beyond. Like any major initiative, it requires financial resources in order to accomplish the intended goals. Project 2025 was primarily funded by billionaires Charles and David Koch, the Koch brothers played a crucial role in funding the Heritage Foundation. The brothers are known for their extensive wealth, which has been derived from the fossil fuel industry. Having long supported conservatives and libertarian causes through their political and advocacy organizations, they not only were a key element in creating Project 2025, but they have significant financial interest in implementing the initiatives within the so-called mandate for Dead. leadership. The consequences will be catastrophic. Trump acolytes have an entire plan called Project 2025. Critics are calling it the fascist playbook. And it's not hyperbole to say that Project 2025 would dismantle democracy as we know it. If their radical conservative agenda is implemented, which is virtually a guarantee, if Donald Trump is re-elected in 2024, then Project 2025 will reshape the nation in ways that will have very negative and far-reaching consequences for the environment, the American people, and the entire world. Other major donors include the Adolf Coors Foundation, the Walton Family Foundation, and ExxonMobil. In 2023, the Heritage Foundation raised $150 million, marking a record-breaking fundraising year. This financial support comes from over 500,000 members, which include both small-dollar donors and major funders. 
Although it's notable that 500,000 people is a fraction of the 334 million people in this country, that's approximately 0.15%, quite a minority attempting to make rules for the overwhelming majority of a formidable threat to democracy that should not be underestimated. Part of the problem and part of the reason it takes so long is Nobody wants to hurt each other anymore. Knock the crap out of them. Like to punch him in the face. I don't condone violence. I don't know if I'll do the fighting myself or if other people will. We Maybe he should have been rushed up. And that is a uh, terrible thing to do. This is being investigated as an attempted assassination. And tonight, the local district attorney telling ABC News at least one person is dead. There's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. We'll never concede, and we're going to the Capitol. James Fields Jr., who traveled from Ohio to join the neo-Nazis, was behind the wheel when counter-protester Heather Heyer was hit and killed. In spite of all this nonsense from the left, we are going to win. We are in the process of the second American Revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. Project 2025 is the white Christian nationalists plan to turn the United States into a theocratic monarchy. It aims to eliminate civil rights, consolidate ultimate power to the executive branch and essentially destroy democracy in the United States. The rise of Hitler compared to the rise of Trump have remarkable similarities. And for Donald Trump as a former president and possible future president to use that language knowing that that language led to the Holocaust. He knows what he's doing and he thinks it works. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! Uh, there are four counts. Count one, conspiracy to defraud the United States. Trump really said it. He'll be a dictator for a day. Count two, conspiracy to uh, obstruct an official proceeding. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. Count three, uh, obstruction of an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Uh, and count four, uh, conspiracy against rights. If any other politician in American history were asked the question, are you going to be a dictator? The overturning of Roe versus Wade has had catastrophic results and has forced doctors to violate their Hippocratic oath to do no harm for fear of losing their medical license, being sued, or even worse, imprisonment. And now, 50 years later, a reversal from the high court. Texas women are sharing their personal stories. Somewhere in America, a woman is going to die in the effort to give birth. There's an underground railroad for women. Democracy is messy, but it's worth it. Your vote matters. Use it while you still can. One of the most impactful things that has already happened but was a direct initiative of Project 2025 was Trump's appointment of partisan Republican Supreme Court justices. This was accomplished through a series of aggressive maneuvers. During Donald Trump's presidency, three Supreme Court justices were appointed. Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett. These appointments have significantly shifted the ideological balance of the court to a conservative majority. Oh, uh, we'd feel like... <laughs> yeah, you know, I, the reason I started with the judges, what can't be undone is a lifetime appointment Prior to these appointments, Democrats were unable to get some of their own appointments due to some unusual and shady moves made by Republicans. The seat that Gorsuch filled was initially nominated for by President Barack Obama with Merrick Garland. However, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell refused to hold hearings for Garland citing the so-called Biden rule that Supreme Court vacancies should not be filled in an election year. There is no Biden rule. It doesn't exist. There's only one rule I ever followed in the Judiciary Committee. That was the Constitution's clear rule of advice and consent. It was not a formal rule, but a political maneuver. Gorsuch was nominated and confirmed relatively quickly. 
Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation was next. I liked beer. Still like beer. He was confirmed by a narrow margin after a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing and a supplemental FBI investigation. Kavanaugh's appointment further solidified the conservative majority in the court, influencing rulings on key issues like reproductive rights and executive power. Amy Coney Barrett's nomination came just weeks before the 2020 election. And scholars across the spectrum say that doesn't mean that Roe should be overruled. Following the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the Republican-controlled Senate expedited her confirmation. The speed and timing of her confirmation was widely criticized as hypocritical and politically motivated, contrasting sharply with the rationale used to block Garland's nomination in 2016. The strategies used to confirm Trump's appointees have had consequential and long-lasting consequences on the judicial landscape and have intensified partisan tensions, raising major concerns about the legitimacy of the Supreme Court. Because they lied in their confirmation hearings. The white Christian nationalist agenda is the most formidable threat this nation has ever faced since the Civil War. Rises in violent rhetoric on the part of the Republican machine has been relentless. Propaganda and misinformation are so prolific that many Americans have simply given up on politics and disengaged completely from the democratic process. The rise of domestic terrorism, particularly associated with white supremacists and white Christian nationalist ideologies, has been well documented and has seen a dramatic increase particularly since the rhetoric that began at the onset of the Trump administration. Although Trump isn't actually the cause of this, rather a symptom of the underlying problem, Donald Trump has given permission to these groups and normalized many things that were previously considered socially unacceptable. FBI Director Christopher Wray has testified multiple times before Congress that white supremacist groups constitute the most lethal and persistent threat in the United States. In 2020, these groups were responsible for 67% of terrorist plots and attacks in the country. Southern Poverty Law Center counts more than 900 active hate groups in the U.S. As frustrating and disheartening as things are right now, for anyone who's paying attention, all hope is not lost. For now, at least, we still have access to all the tools we need to win this battle. What we need is ballots, not bullets. On July 13th, 2024, Donald Trump held a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. At that rally, a supposed assassination attempt was carried out. There are many questionable things regarding the reported events of that day. One thing is certain, however, Donald Trump is a reality TV star. His entire life, has revolved around perception, brand names, image without any substance. However, perception is power, and this is something that Donald Trump has exploited his entire life. Despite his many failed businesses, bankruptcies, and otherwise abhorrent conduct, this plays right into the personality cult that he has created since the days of his reality show, The Apprentice. When Reagan was shot, the Secret Service threw him straight into the car. Fuck the shoes. Trump, somehow, was allowed to raise his fist in defiance. Key takeaway from all of this, none of it matters. Ballots, not bullets. The rise of domestic terrorism and the intertwining of white Christian nationalism with politics in the United States share troubling parallels with the strategies found in the dictator's playbook and the principles of fascism. 
Some key comparisons would be the consolidation of power. Dictators seek to undermine democracy by consolidating power to the executive branch, manipulation of nationalism and identity. Dictators exploit national identity and cultural or religious sentiments to unify, support, and marginalize opposition. The rise of white Christian nationalism in the United States reflects this tactic as it emphasizes a specific religious and cultural identity to justify exclusionary policies. Dictators always demand control over information, thus, when they come to power, an immediate transition of available information to the public occurs. In China, for instance, the internet is tightly regulated, resulting in the public seeing only what the government wants them to see. This makes it nearly impossible for a society to escape the grip of a fascist dictatorship once it has already gained power. Look at what's happening in Russia today. Vladimir Putin is engaging in war crimes, invading a sovereign country, the cost of which is tremendous to his country, his people, and yet he has an extremely high approval rating, according to Russian media anyway. Fascism's defining characteristic is ultra-nationalism and often includes the idea of rejuvenation or returning a nation to his previously glorious state in essence making a nation great again, a return to the golden age. Fascism relies on centralizing power under a single leader and or party indefinitely and removing any and all constraints by installing loyalists and eliminating opposition. Political dissent is not tolerated in a fascist society. Opposition will be removed swiftly through legal and or illegal or any means necessary. Weaponization of the Justice Department is mandatory and with every accusation, it's actually a confession. The tactics used in domestic extremist groups in the U.S. bear unmistakable similarities. The exploitation of marginalized minority groups, the undermining of democratic norms, and the promoting of a cult of personality are all key components of a fascist dictator Understanding these parallels can help in recognizing the threats. No one in the United States knew the threat that Donald Trump posed when he first came down that golden escalator, but his charismatic personality combined with the many social and economic conditions of the United States today created a window of opportunity, and he took it. Many don't think that Donald Trump even wanted to be president, but when he won the 2016 election, he got a taste of ultimate power, and for a narcissist like Trump, that's irresistible. He pushed the norms to the boundary, constantly normalizing behavior that would have rendered any other politician unelectable, until the threat became so grave that real, actual patriots had no choice but to try and hold him responsible. By that point, it was too late, and his lust for power had turned into a desperate campaign to stay out of prison. And here we are. Are we going to trust a dishonest con man with no empathy, no remorse, no decency? But for the low, low price of $59.99, you can buy the God Bless the USA Bible. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years, you know what? It'll be fixed, it'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you Christians, I'm not Christian. I love you, get out, you gotta get out and vote. In four years you don't have to vote again, we'll have it fixed so good. You I didn't even include that. Uh, the brand, if I wanted to uh, create a statement that was high, I would have put the brand on. We had the whole thing about why Trump ran for the presidency in the first place raises questions. The notion that it was only a publicity stunt for marketing isn't just a rumor. He's sitting right there. That's right. That guy. <laughs> Mark Burnett, the man who brought us Celebrity Apprentice. Thanks to Mark Burnett, we don't have to watch reality shows anymore because we're living in one. Thank you, Mark.
Thank you for coming all the way from England to, uh, to tear us all apart with your intricate plot. It worked. Everybody in the world knows you're bald on top, but he still, he walks around in an illusion. You know, that, that's what Trump is. He's sort of like the world's greatest example of self-mythologization. Temporary bone spurs is a debilitating disease temporarily affecting one out of every 45 presidents. Sufferers experience pain that is described as mind-numbingly mild and excruciatingly fine and occasional, while its effectiveness as an excuse for military service is immediate and long-lasting. Stolen valor is the act of impersonating military personnel or exaggerating deeds undertaken in service of the U.S. military. A man came up to me. And he handed me his Purple Heart. And I said, man, that's like, that's like big stuff. I always wanted to get the Purple Heart. This was much easier. He didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. paid zero, that means zero for troops, zero for vets. He declared the winner of season one. Pruitt says that Donald Trump was recorded using the N-word. Noel was a former talent handler on The Celebrity Apprentice and has publicly accused Trump of various inappropriate behaviors, including illegal drug use and sexual misconduct. Mark Burnett has widely been criticized for not speaking out against Trump, largely because of the non-disclosure agreements that Trump insisted on. Burnett has faced immense pressure to release tapes. And nobody outthinks me. Nobody. That racial slurs used by Trump and other offensive language was commonplace. And I'm going to sue you if I have to. Do you understand? A former producer on the show has indicated that such tapes exist. First of all, The Apprentice, which is 20 years old now, uh, when it debuted, is a FCC regulated game show. And in that, um, we had to strategically find a way to consult with this guy. He's very busy at the time. He's a quote unquote billionaire. Um, we went about um, telling him the pluses and minuses of each character in a very balanced sort of way. And it will be basically any meeny miny mo. Yeah. And then Trump will make his decision on who he hired. And Trump seemed to have an issue with this idea all along. You could see him reacting and shaking his head, wobbling his head, grimacing, mm -hmm. wincing before he said, yeah, but would America buy, an, and he said the N-word, winning. I looked at Trump to see the reaction that he was giving, like it was some sort of joke, and he was still wincing and bobbing his head, and he was serious. And The interplay wow. between Burnett and his decision to enforce NDAs, Kasler's decision to break his silence, highlights significant ethical and legal challenges in holding powerful figures accountable. As a matter of fact, I don't want you to believe me. I want you to judge for yourself. You know, I want you to find your own explanation of this behavior because there's no other way to. There's over 200 women who have said he assaulted them. Many factors are aligning simultaneously to cause a perfect storm situation, such as the challenges caused by the rapid change of technology, increasing financial pressure on the disappearing middle class, and the worldwide rise of authoritarian dictatorships which are bent on destroying democracy in the world. Just a few short years ago, it would have been unthinkable to hear any Republican parrot pro-Putin propaganda or praise any authoritarian dictator whatsoever. Those days are over. And then we fell in love. Okay? No, really. He wrote me beautiful letters. And they're great letters. We are experiencing the transition to a new epoch, from the recent digital age through the information age and on to the AI or artificial intelligence age. And with it comes many risks and challenges, some of which could threaten the very existence of humanity itself. But like with all technological advances, this is a double-edged sword. Currently, we the people all have the power to utilize these tools and harness the power to create change, which is the reason why this documentary was able to be created in four days with zero monetary budget. Democracy is not a spectator sport. Get involved, stay informed, speak out. Together, we can ensure that democracy thrives in the United States.